Good morning. We're going to continue developing a pump control system that we've been working on, and we're going to add in some human interface uh, aspects to the design. First of all, the APB controller itself has an LCD screen built into it. It has left, right, and up, down cursor control. This allows us to move around the screen and also to switch between different screens. We can program up to 64 different message displays up here and select um, based on the cursor. The plus and minus buttons allow us to enter numeric values to change them, such as set points, timer values, um, that type of uh, inputs. The escape key allows us to exit out of a screen and the O key allows us to accept the value that we, we put in. Uh, quite often we'll augment our uh, control screens with uh, visible lights, audio alarms, and we'll look at some of those as we develop the application. This is the application that we've put together so far. There's a start button that latches on um, a, a latch that starts a timer that turns on a pump. There's a seal leak detector. Uh, this analog value has to be above a certain level before the uh, start can activate the pump. And there's a stop button. What we want to do is uh, take a look at some of this in operation. We'll run our simulator. We see that we have a analog set point that must be above 7.5. That's detecting a, a, a low resistance, if you like, on the, the seal leak detector. Uh, provided that input's on, when we hit the start, we time down for three seconds, turn on the pump. And then when we hit the stop, we time down for two seconds to turn off the pump. What we want to do is bring some of this information up to the operator so they can see it as the system is running. We'll go over to our digital capabilities, and we see at the bottom we have this setup HMI block. We'll bring one of those over. Right click it and go down and look at the properties. We see that there's actually two types of pages we can display. There's a normal page which the operator would get at using the scrolling buttons and a triggered page. If we select that it brings up an input. When this input goes active it will trigger this page up and uh, that would be used for alarm conditions. Initially we want just a normal operating screen. Uh, by selecting the initial screen option it means this will be the first screen that comes up during the uh, when the system powers up. Along the top, we can put in um, text, we can put in lamps, which will flash on and off, depending on the digital state. Um, we can put in some uh, messages, uh, numeric values, and then the block information. We'll be looking at this in a few minutes. Let's start off by putting in a uh, simple indicator to tell us that the pump is running or not. So we'll call this pump on. And we can use a simple indicator for that. When we select the indicator, it asks us, well, what I.O. point are you actually looking at? What we want to be looking at is the output number zero, which is the pump. The other thing we want to do is we want to have a monitor of the sealed input. So we'll select another block of text down here, and we'll call this seal uh, level and we want in this case to put in a numeric value so we'll go to the block section here and we see that we can select between the on off delay block with the analog threshold value and for the analog threshold if we select that we can look at the current value whether it's on or off the gain or the offset well, we want the current value, but we don't really need 11 digits. It's only a um, 0 to, to 10 value. So what we'll do is we'll put this down as a um, two-digit number. I'm sorry, a three-digit number. And we'll have these numeric values filled in. Uh, when the, the application is actually running. So we now have a, uh, a 
reading of our seal level, the pump on or off, and if we select OK, run our simulator again. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll click on this, and this shows us the display as it would be on the LCD itself. When we run our analog input level up, we see that it matches over here. And when we start our pump, after three seconds, we'll see that our pump comes on. So we now have the human operator screen, human interface screen up and running, and uh, the operator can see the status of the the system. The LCD screen block can be moved just about anywhere on your, your page. Well, the other thing we want to do is put in a, an alarm situation. Quite often, a pump is going to have a thermal overload detect on it. So we'll tie in another input, and this input is going to be a, um, we'll tie it to input number, uh, number three. We'll call this thermal overload. It should be a normally closed contact coming off of a pump, and if it actually goes active, then we want to do two things. We want to immediately turn off a latch and relay, and we want to stop a timer. Now, since it's normally closed, we're going to have to do a bit of logic here. First thing we want to do is invert that signal so that it will go to zero when it's not active. And then we want to put in an OR gate so that if the stop happens, or if the thermal overload happens, we will reset our pump. We have an extra input unused, so we'll go in and we'll set that one to a low level because we don't want it active. Now when we start our simulator, we see that, um, again, we have to set our threshold above the preset level. We hit start. But our thermal overload is now disabling our motor from running because this should be a normally closed contact. So if we set this on, then hit start, our timer is running as we'd expect, and the pump comes on. We can stop our motor, restart it, and let's say the thermal overload trips. Where it trips and it sets the reset, but that leaves the timer stuck because it was still powering up and it hasn't got to uh, even turning on the pump yet. So we need to change the logic around and the best way to do that is to simply reset this timer if this thermal overload should go off. So we'll take this output here, tie it into this, restart our simulator, Disable the thermal overload, set our threshold, start our pump. We see that the pump starts running. If we hit our stop, it times down, turns off our pump. But if we um, hit our thermal overload, it immediately turns off our pump. Now the thermal overload is typically going to want to activate a, uh, an alarm signal of some kind, so we'll go over, we'll add an output, we'll actually add two outputs over here. One of the outputs we'll call Q1, ah, and we'll call that the alarm light, and the second output we'll call Q2, that would be the siren. These would be mounted on the outside of the box to attract the attention of whoever's running the machine. The alarm light will have it blank, so we'll go over to our digital, go up and select something called a blinker block. Tie it in. Properties on it, we won't be using the reset. 
So we'll leave that low and we'll have a one second on, one second off blink and light when the alarm condition goes off. And we know that the alarm condition, um, this point will be going high. That will cause your light to blink. And then on a siren, we quite often want to be able to turn the siren off. So we'll put a AND circuit in with the siren and another input. This will be input number four. We'll call that silence. Tie that to that. When the alarm condition comes on, and we have an unused input, which we'll set to a high level. So now when we run our application, uh, the thermal overload should be always closed. The threshold should be up around eight or nine. Uh, we start our pump, pump starts up. We see that we have our display running. Um, the thermal overload trips. The alarm light starts to blink on and off once a second. Um, the siren though right now is off because uh, this is uh, open. If we turn that on, um, the silent uh, siren would be running. So that completes our application. We now have a pump that's um, got thermal overload protection and a seal leak detection built into it. We have an alarm light to indicate troubles, a siren that can be silenced, and a small display showing the current level and the pump. In the next application will pull in some more HMI uh, capabilities showing how we can trigger the HMI when we uh, have an alarm condition. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.